I'm going to show you my Maui Blazer app. Uh, here I have two um, instances of the app. One running in Android and one running in the iOS simulator. Uh, this is just a... Um, this is a Maui app using the Maui Blazer integration. Meaning that it's all based on web technologies and running in, in Maui using Blazor as the UI component framework. So it's all web technologies that enables this rendering. And I'm using Fluent UI as the component framework. So all components here are based on the Fluent UI component integration with Blazor that are web components. It's a standard Blazor Maui app which has been enriched by the by integrating the, the Fluent UI um, template into it. You can't get this um, experience out of the box. You have, uh, as, at least as it is right now, you have to add it yourself. So I've simply started from a a separate project generated from the Fluent UI temp, uh, project template and then copied the assets over to the Maui, uh, Maui Blazor hybrid app. And this is what you get with some smaller modifications to the actual shell of the application to make it look good in the in the um, in the mobile experience. And that's mainly in the status bar area and such because those areas behave differently depending on platform. So we have the Android emulator and the um, iOS simulator. And this is the experience out of the box really. I've just added one thing and that's the QR, QR code scanner, uh, QR code scanner page, which is an integration with the Maui uh, components for reading uh, QR codes. And that uh, is based on the Zebra Crossing uh, uh, library and its components and integration with Maui. And then I did a small modification to the weather, pa uh, weather page. And that's um, adding the data, uh, Fluent UI data grid, which is not used by default. I guess, or is it? I don't think so. I think I had to create that myself. Um, anyway, uh, the sample should have that. I I I hope it will have that in in the future. But as you can see, it just displays some data in the data grid, which, from as far as I know, or I read, is based on the same code base as the Quick Grid um, component. Uh, I don't know to what extent if it's just sharing code or is there is some other stuff behind it, but. Uh, that's at least what I read in some GitHub issue, and it might be some that someone just assumed that. But uh, the knowledge is there because Microsoft is behind the the Fluent UI components um, and and the um, and the Quick Grid component as well. So yeah, this um, weather component uh, has been modified. Uh, to use the data grid, as well as connecting to the to a web API that I'm hosting on the side. And here's the web API, or at least the this uh, Swagger UI uh, displaying the the open API uh, specification. As you can see, it's just a the the weather forecast API that's out of the box. And I'm actually using NSWAG instead of Schwashbuckle to generate this specification. 
So there are some there are some things that are specific just to to this um, this uh, generated specification. And just to show you, here's the API. It's just a uh, just a standard a default weather forecast uh, API with these lines added. I think just to influence the generation of the client because I'm generating a uh, C sharp client using the um, using the built-in um, functionality for that. And here's the uh, uh, the ends uh, is the the stuff specific to the end swag generation. Uh, uh, yeah, let's have a look at the code for the application. It's the uh, default Maui Blazor hybrid template with some additions. We have the Maui Community Toolkit, which adds some behaviors and and such, and also the pop-up functionality to the um, to the application. And then we add the special Sigo UI font, which is used by Fluent by Fluent UI. We add the services for the Fluent UI components. And of course, add Maui Blazor web view, which is used by Maui Blazor to display the display the um, actual Blazor component. And then we have the typed client here, uh, which is generated from the Swagger file, from the Open Open API specification, and it connects to the Dev Tunnel. Yes, we are using a Dev Tunnel. To connect to the service that is running locally, that's quite neat uh, because uh, it's very hard <laughs> to configure the the emulators and simulators to connect to the local host. Uh, so using a dev tunnel makes it a lot easier to connect to the connect to the service. Uh, it also is quite nice because using dev tunnels you can. You can also let others connect to your um, to your services running locally and to check them out and so and yeah to try them really. So it's a very neat thing to have when you uh, are developing locally and you don't have a you're not having it uh, exposing it to the internet. Uh, and it's of course very safe. You um, you can uh, you can lock it down to so that only certain people can connect to it, or you can do it as I do here, um, connect to it um, anonymously. And that's what I've created an anon an, an anonymous uh, connection here. Uh, So yeah, we have the weather forecast client, and it, it lives in this um, my API client, and this is a Swagger file. It's a very, it's pretty simple. It's just the endpoint and the the schema for the for the actual forecast. But uh, we uh, generate the client, and it's uh, actually put in the in the um, output folder in the object in the object folder here and this is the client it's the iWeather forecast client and the generated um, implementation of that client thanks to an swag um, that has a very has a fantastic way of generating uh, generating um, clients from open API especially if you're using their own um, um, facilities for generating open API de um, specifications because they have some there are some extensions that make it 
um, that can help you in certain situations like if you want to model something with inheritance you can do that but it's non-standard but at least that, that's the there's the option uh, in that uh, yeah and let's go back to the my app we have the the blazer components in the components folder we have the layout using the layout components from the Fluent UI uh, component toolkit. You can see here's where the actual page content is uh, populated. Uh, then we have the, the NAM menu and the, I've simply added the QR code um, menu item here. Uh, that navigates to the QR code page and the Q uh, QR code page looks like this. As I mentioned, it's, a, an, in, it's, a, it, uh, it's an integration to the, um, with the Maui, um, using the Maui pop-up component, which is in the uh, Maui community toolkit. So it's an extension that I use. So when you click the button in the, if you click the button here in, in the, um, for scanning the code, you will, it will prompt the, uh, to use the, to, to interact with the Maui component, fra Maui framework. It's a control framework. It's not. We shouldn't confuse it with with the Blazor component. So uh, you simply pass the scan QR code pop up um, QR code pop up um, component here. This is the SAML for that. As you can see, it uh, utilizes the zebra crossing camera barcode reader view, and in the code behind when the barcode has been detected this is connected to barcodes connect um, detected um, event it will simply return from the um, from the pop-up uh, returning the string content of that QR code that has been scanned As you can see here, that's the, the result. And you can see here, it's um, displaying it in a fluent card. And then we have the weather component here that I modified to use the fluent data grid. We inject the weather cost forecast weather forecast client here and we use it to fetch the, the weather forecasts. That's how simple it is. And then just to show you as well what we have. The modifications that I've done to to the um, to the content page in the content page is you, I've done some modifications to the content page to easier to to make it look well on the different make it look good on different um, um, different platforms uh, and it's pertaining to the um, status bar and the safe area and such. So I'm setting the background color to the same color as the, um, as the nav bar. As you can see, this blue. And then I use the safe area. When I use the safe area, it will, in a normal case, 
this part will be part of this will be placed over here uh, up in this area but we want it to be placed in the safe area instead because it doesn't look great with this um, with this experience with the navbar so that's why we tell it to use uh, that on iOS we should use the safe area on this page and uh, then we have the stats bar behavior which adds the color to the stats bar and that's for the Android for the Android app because it works a bit different so it integrates well with that so we simply set the, the page background color in the status bar area and as you can see this is the Blazor web view that's where the Blazor component uh, shows up and yeah it's simply this part <laughs> 